Iowa and Nebraska getting the brunt of the severe storms as the powerful twisters obliterate homes and farms, leaving thousands without power. And what we have 100 mile per hour straight line winds. Yeah, we basically a, a hurricane. You know, when a whole whole tree gets uprooted, that's way out of the right of way and falls on your power line. There, there's not a lot you can do to prevent that. You know, 150,000 people that lost power for a couple of days and you have a Tesla um, or an F-150 or whatever it might be. Uh, I, you're not going to run your AC for that long, but, you know, keep your refrigerator door closed. You might might save your fridge. You can turn your Internet router on. Hi, I'm David with EV World News, and I'm here today with engineer Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? Doing great, David. Glad to be here. My lights are on. Power's flowing. Yard yard cleanup's going well. That's a good thing. Oh, I'm, I'm sure in your space, uh, being in the energy space and grid consulting, that what's going on with the power companies, you know, here in Omaha, you know, what we have? Was it Wednesday we got hit? Yeah, it was Wednesday. What did we can go out today? Millions of people are at risk tonight as monster tornadoes are tearing through the Midwest. Iowa and Nebraska getting the brunt of the severe storms as the powerful twisters obliterate homes and farms, leaving thousands without power. And what we have, 100 mile per hour straight line winds? Yeah, we basically a, a hurricane, which is um, normally we'll see that on the front end of a storm just for, you know, a minute these big winds come through, but this was sustained for a good half hour, 45 minutes across this, those type of winds did a lot of damage, a lot of power outages. So I, uh, we used to work with a lot of those people and I feel for them right now, you know, when a whole, whole tree gets uprooted, that's way out of the right of way and falls on your power line. There, there's not a lot you can do to prevent that. I, I honestly, it just seems hard to fathom. You know, these trees have been there for years. All of a sudden one storm is enough to blow them over. But I suspect in a lot of cases, the tree has grown above the other trees, and so it's able to catch a little more wind and, and things like that. And it, it's a weird time of year for this that type of storm, too. So all, all of the foliage and leaves are all all in full. So, yeah, maybe they just caught it a little bit different than they would have you know, earlier in the spring. There's a Long John Silvers over in La Vista that its sign is, like, snapped. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you know, when you have a commercial sign, for it to be snapped, that was a lot of wind power to cause something like that. It's crazy. But like we, we were just talking about before this, like what would a good opportunity in the future if you had vehicle to grid, you know, charging capabilities or or directional charging in your house? Because we, we're a week out and we still have a couple of thousand people across the area without power. Had, you know, 150,000 people that lost power for a couple of days, which is, well, if you have your panel set up right and you have a Tesla um, or an F-150 or whatever it might be. Uh, I, you're not going to run your AC for that long, but, you know, keep your refrigerator door closed. You might might save your fridge. You can turn your internet router on, listen to the radio. You can watch TV. You can figure a couple of things out to ride you through a couple of days at least. Well, if you, if you combine that with solar, then you'd never run out of power. It would have been a non-event for you. Uh, I know people that have, you know, I was telling you about one of my friends, his is out, they have a generator, but that only goes so far and they can only power so much. And then it turned out their generator somehow wasn't connected to their well because they're on well water. So they were having problems with uh, water and power and all of that. So they were in a real big bind. And you look at there was trees over roads and different things like that. But it is pretty amazing. If you think back a few years ago, when they had that winter storm in Texas where they had to shut down the nuclear power plants. Mm -hmm. And it said that the renewable energy wasn't working, all these other things. But if if even 20% of the population had had bidirectional charging at home, you know, it would have been almost a non-issue for the grid because they would have been able to switch to using the power from the electric vehicles to keep the grid going. And it wouldn't have been this huge catastrophe that it turned out to be in Texas. It's coming from a grid planning standpoint. You're, you're literally planning for an um, now, now conditions are like that a couple hours around it, but that's where it is. Boy, if you could switch on bi-directional charging for just that hour, like, hey, we need to, we just need to ride through this event and then we're going to be okay. It changes the dynamic. I mean, it really opens up how you can approach grid planning and what that looks like where, all right, I just got this little extra, oomph, I can push on for this hour and, and ride through. It's, it's a cool concept. And I, I like as, 
I don't like to see storms happen more often, but it seems like at least here, the, the winds impacting the power company are used to be an every 10 year thing. Now it's about an every three year thing. Um, and that use case and value of, well, what if I put up a couple of solar panels? What if I have an EV and can charge that vehicle just, just enough to ride me through, you know, an extra day or two changes a whole lot of things out there. Yeah. Well, you think about if you have an EV without solar, but you have bi-directional charging, you can power your house for two or three days. Okay. If you have solar, it's a non-issue completely because it's recharging during the day if if you can access that. And uh, so a, a horrific weather event like what we had isn't such a big deal. Yeah. And just, just a little bit of habit changing and conservation. That, okay. Just I'm going to be cognizant about turning the lights off when I leave a room. Or, hey, it's daylight. I don't need this light. It, you can ride through. You you could ride through almost indefinitely with, with a little bit of solar and an EV. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.